Hello there, I'm Matt, and today I'm going to be painting up another miniature from the Super Dungeon Explorer core box. This time, from the savage wastelands, it's the Claw Tribe Barbarian. And we're going to be working on a little bit of cell shading today. Let's get started! When it comes to vicious female barbarians, my mind immediately went to Red Sonia. Depicted as my reference art from the poster by Renato Cassaro for the 1985 film with Bridget Nielsen and Arnold Schwarzenegger. The colors are bold and the shadows strong, so my challenge for this model was to reflect the high contrast skin tone and apply anime cell shading to the blood red hair. This was another model whose weapon crossed over the center of the body, so I separated the axe piece and set it aside to work on later. To give the skin that red-orange shadow, I started with a base coat of Wild Rider Red all over the skin. Since the shadows on the hair are very dark, I started with a base coat of Rhinox Hide Brown for all of the hair, as well as the fur on her cuffs and hide loincloth, and the little skull on her shoulder. Any remaining cloth on the outfit, including the top and hip armor, got a base coat of Caliban Green. And finally, the knee pads and rocky base were coated with Eshin Gray. Because I started with a darker base coat for the skin, I began working on the first layer rather than applying a wash. For this, I created a 50-50 mix of Wild Rider Red and Kislev Flesh, since the Kislev Flesh color has quite a peachy orange tone. For the next layer, I mixed in some Reaper Master Series Rosy Skin Tone, leaving some of the darker reddish skin shade on the underside of the jaw, between the shoulder blades, and between the legs and her butt. To begin the eyes, I base coated them with Ulthuan Grey, being careful to leave that fine ring of darkened skin around the edge. While waiting for that to fully dry before adding a second coat, I painted the eyebrows and lashes with Rhinox Hide, and I mixed a tiny bit of Emperor's Children Pink into my flesh mix to redden up her cheeks as though she's been getting heated swinging that giant axe around. The war paint on her eye got some Tesla's blue. In order to make sure this color didn't stand out too much, I later used this color for the beads on her earring bones. Because she's swinging that axe in a furious rage, she needed an appropriate look of mindless aggression. Most anime eyes mostly fill the sclera with the iris and pupil, leaving very little white. However, when the characters are very angry or very scared, the iris and pupil tend to shrink together, so our little barbarian cut small irises with bloody corn red, a very dark Caliban green for pupils, and Ulthuan gray for a reflection. For the mouth, I used Rhinox hide for the base coat, corn red for the tongue, and Ulthuan gray for the teeth, and a bit of Wild Rider red for the upper lip. After a quick touch-up on the skin, it was on to the hair. For the first layer of hair, I mixed up a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide with Evil Sun's Scarlet, and applied it over most of the hair, leaving the darkest recesses that dark brown. For most animated characters, the individual images are created without smooth transitions between colors. So the main color and the shadow layers have distinct edges, rather than a gradual brightening or darkening. That style is cell shading, and to replicate the effect, I painted on a heavy coat of Evil Sun's Scarlet in a smaller pattern on each block of hair, not entirely covering any particular high or low surface, instead trying to create a new shape inside of the sculpted shape, one that had some tips and points to imply the continuation of the hair. My 50-50 mix for the first layer was pretty dark, so I didn't create an in-between tone and instead created harsh boundaries between the first layer and this bold new red layer. For the reflective highlight on the hair, I created a zigzag line with Troll Slayer Orange across a handful of the hair chunks closer to the edge, loosely in the same shapes that I created for the previous layer. 
Those zigzags got a final highlight with Averland's Sunset, retracing the line near the center. And with that, the simple cell shading was finished. Next, I created a simple scale pattern on all the green areas with Warboss Green. Stippling is a very easy technique that can add a textured look to an otherwise flat surface by gently creating a pattern of dots with the tip of the brush. Typically, you would want to use an old worn out brush for this because pushing down directly on the tip of a good brush will bend and ruin the hair. But because all my brushes are getting old and I'm a lazy fool, I just use my regular catch-all brush, but I tried to be careful with it. For the metal on the knee pads, I wanted to go for a more earthy, raw metal color, so I mixed in some Ushabdi Bone into my Eshin Grey. The fur was mostly done with hatching, creating random short strokes with Mornfang Brown to get that look of messy bear hide fur. Then I did a handful of highlight hatches with Scrag Brown. For the rope around the waist and the skin on the back of the hide, I used plain old Kisla Flesh. And then I finished off the skull on her shoulder with Ushabti Bone. All that's left is the axe and the base. I cleaned up my base by coating the surface of the stones with a 50-50 mix of Eshin Grey and Fenrisian Grey, and then finished them off with an edge highlight of pure Fenrisian Grey. Now for the axe, I painted the whole handle with Steel Legion Drab, a medium tan color for the leather wrapped stick. While waiting for that to dry, I gave the hands and fur the same treatments I had done earlier on the body section. I gave the axe handle a wash of burnt umber ink thinned with water to darken up the recesses. Then highlighted back up the edges of the cloth again with Steel Legion Drab and a bit of Ushabti Bone on the ridges that face up. Now I glued the axe to the body so that I could coat the blade with Eshin Grey. And the wood with Mornfang Brown. Because this axe has probably seen a hundred bloody battles, I gave it a haphazard scraped look with a messy highlight of 50-50 Eshin Grey and Ushabdi Bone, with a final highlight of pure Ushabdi Bone in little arcs. Similarly, I made little scribbles with Scrag Brown on the wood to give it a quick and dirty stylized wood grain look. All that was left was to give the nails on the wood some Eshin Grey and clean up the base rim. In the end, I went with Wild Rider Red for the base rim because it had a hint of orange in it and I was thinking of the Barbarian as the orange player character. However, it is probably a bit bright of a choice for some people. If I were painting this model for display, I'd probably go with a darker, less bold color, but for the cluttered game board, I chose to leave it an easily recognizable color. This model was a ton of fun to paint, and she gave me the opportunity to use a little bit of a wide range of techniques. I can't wait to see her in action smashing kobolds with that crazed expression and comically large axe in my next Super Dungeon Explore session. If you enjoyed watching me paint the Claw Tribe Barbarian, first of all, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me paint these miniatures live, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash microtonalmat. The link to that will be in the description below. And of course, if you want to see me paint the rest of this box in these brief uh, video formats, you can subscribe to me here on the YouTube channel, and that will really help me out. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.